Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Edible Garden Series. Um, my name is Sarah Bostic, and I'm a Sustainable Agriculture Extension Agent in both DeSoto and Sarasota counties. Um, and I am joined today by my wonderful coworker, Carol Wyatt Evans, who is the Chemicals in the Environment Agent in Sarasota County. Um, we, um, this is a collaborative series that we are putting on with two of our excellent coworkers, Mindy Hannock, who is the Community and School Gardens Coordinator for Sarasota County, as well as uh, the um, Communications Specialist in our office, Kevin O'Horn. Um, we're doing this series every Monday from 12 to 1230, um, more or less. And um, we hope that you will join us for some future series as well. We are really having a good time with this series. Well, hold on one second. Some reason it doesn't want to work. There we go. So this is session four. If you missed the first three sessions and you'd like to hear them again, um, they are available on our, our office's YouTube channel. And we will send you the link to that and some follow-up information. Uh, this, uh, this, today's topic is mulching, choosing the right mulch for your vegetable garden. So it is a very, very common thing in our office that when folks walk through our front door, they come in because they are struggling to figure out how to grow things in Florida. Um, we hear all the time that folks used to have a really green thumb, they used to be really good at gardening, and then they moved to Florida and they're having a really hard time figuring out how to adjust everything they used to know about successful gardening to Florida. So that is the inspiration behind the series and we hope that you enjoy the information that you are learning. So there's an amazing number of benefits to mulching. And one of the things to think about when you're, when you're mulching is that mulching is really a way of replicating what works really well in nature. If you think about, think about pretty much any ecosystem in the world other than the beach or a very dry desert, everywhere else in the world that's a natural area has covered soil, right? And it, in, in natural ecosystems, as plants die or drop their leaves, things like that, they, they are basically a self-mulching system. And that works really well to keep plants in that ecosystem healthy. So that's something that we can learn from nature about how, how important having covered soil is. And so that's where we come in. When, we, when we're gardening, we're, we're inherently doing something that's a little bit unnatural. We're putting plants places that they wouldn't otherwise be but we can improve that system by actually just covering the soil. And there's, there's quite a few things that mulching does um, that, that really benefits the success of your garden. One is that mulch helps to conserve water. Mulch actually conserves a lot of water because the sun can't directly hit the soil. Um, direct sun hitting soil not only uh, evaporates a huge amount of water out of the soil, but it also results in some really significant um, spikes and drops in soil temperature. If you think about a really hot sunny day, um, if you're trying to walk on the beach barefoot, it can actually be a painful experience. And that's, that's, this, that's the experience that your plants and all of the good soil microbes are having as well in really hot soil. It's, re it's a really painful, stressful thing. Um, so by mulching, you're actually helping to keep the soil temperature much more stable. And that's a really good thing for plants. It helps them be less stressed. Plants, um, plants that are mulched are also more resilient to disease. Um, a lot of plant diseases actually hang out in the soil and then they get into the plants not through their root system, but actually by uh, contaminated soil splashing up onto the leaves. Um, a lot of plant diseases are a contact disease. Um, and so by keeping your soil mulched and covered, um, that soil can't ever actually splash up onto the leaves. Um, so there's so many, so many really important benefits to mulching um, and it's such a simple thing to do. So we're gonna dive into what some of those are. There's so many benefits to mulch. Um, and if, you, if you've never mulched before, um, it's, it can be a really amazing change in your success in gardening. Um, and so there's two of the really big things that mulching does is that it actually helps conserve water in your soil. So you'll actually use less water overall if you keep that soil covered. Um, if you think about natural areas, um, there's pretty much no natural area other than the, the beach um, or the middle of a desert that 
that has exposed soil, right? Nature really likes keeping soil covered. And so as much as we can mimic the things that nature does really well, um, the, the better success we tend to have. So another thing that mulch does is that it also truly does help prevent plant diseases. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that a lot of plant diseases actually live in the soil. And rather than be pulled up into a plant through the root system, um, it actually will, will um, a lot of those diseases will infect the plant by splashing up when it rains, um, splashing soil up onto the leaves of the plant. And that's actually how a lot of plant diseases end up um, infecting a plant. So if you keep that soil covered, you get less of that splashing um, that happens that spreads disease around. Um, mulch also helps keep the soil temperature uh, much more stable. Um, bare soil has major temperature fluctuations from really, really hot to really cold. And mulch soil stays much, um, much more neutral temperature and that really helps with the plant stress level and that helps keep a plant healthy. So um, just really quickly wanna show you this picture. Um, this is a picture that I took on um, a farm that I managed on campus at the University of Florida a few years ago. And it was a, a, student, a student farm um, where we got to do all sorts of really interesting sustainable agriculture um, methods. And so this was a, a planting where there's a bed of, um, bed of three rows of lettuce that you can see on the right side of your screen and a bed that has three rows of lettuce on the left side of the screen. These beds were planted the exact same day um, with the same trays of lettuce. They got the same amount of water, the same amount of fertilizer. Um, and you can see that those are two very different looking beds of lettuce, right? The one that got mulch is a much happier, healthier, lusher planting of lettuce. Um, and this is to me a really good visual of how impactful mulching is. Okay, so let's dive in and talk about what kinds of mulch you can use. So if you happen to be located in Florida or somewhere else in the deep south, uh, Spanish moss is actually a great mulch. Um, you can, I, I would definitely recommend only picking it up off the ground because it's, you know, it's still a, a living thing up in the, in the trees. So don't pull it out of the trees, but when it falls to the ground after a storm or big wind, you can pick that, that Spanish moss up and put it right, um, right in your garden. Um, you have to put a pretty thick layer of moss down because it, um, it does allow a lot of space for, um, for light to come through. And that light will actually help to stimulate the growth of weeds. So if you're gonna use Spanish moss, just go for a really thick layer. But that's a really great um, source of mulch that's probably already growing right there in your yard. So pine straw, this is, um, this is another one that um, there's a lot of mixed ideas about whether or not pine straw is a good thing to use in a vegetable garden. Um, so unless, unless, you have, um, unless you have incredibly acidic soil already, you know, like, like very, very acidic where you already struggle to keep vegetables happy, then pine straw actually is a great mulch in a vegetable garden. Um, you, it's, it's best to not mix it down into the soil because it will, it will kind of bind up a lot of the available nitrogen that's in the soil and it definitely will also add some acidity to the soil. Um, but as long as you keep it right there on top of your soil, about two to three inches thick, makes a really nice, really easy to work with mulch. Um, and if you happen to have pine trees in your yard, um, that's another really good free source of mulch as well. Uh, seaweed is one that, that people um, either love it or they hate it. Um, I happen to love using seaweed to mulch with. Um, there's, um, it's full of some really amazing trace minerals that plants need just a little bit of, um, but they do need it. And our soils, especially down here in the sandy soil zone, tend to be fairly devoid of a lot of those trace minerals. Um, plants really love seaweed. Um, some things to know about it that are on the, on the negative side is that seaweed um, in, in a lot of places naturally contains low levels of arsenic. Um, arsenic is naturally occurring in soil um, at, at very low levels. So if you, um, if you are worried at all about, um, about adding arsenic to your soil, you want to avoid fresh seaweed. Um, but um, if, um, but seaweed, seaweed contains such low levels of arsenic that unless you're using massive quantities of seaweed, it will not elevate the arsenic level in your soil too much. <laughs> or to a problematic level. Um, it breaks down really quickly, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. Um, it's adding really good nutrients back into your soil really quickly, but it doesn't stick around for very long. 
Um, and then it definitely often contains trash. Um, so if you're picking up um, seaweed from the beach, just be, just be cognizant of the trash that it might contain. Uh, so wood chips are another um, source of mulch that a lot of folks like to use in gardens. Um, and wood chips actually work quite well. Um, and again, you don't want to push those wood chips down into your soil at all. You really want them to sit on the, on the surface of your soil and just naturally break down. If you actually incorporate them down into your soil, they will, um, like uh, wood chips are basically pure carbon. Um, and plants need carbon, but they, they need it in a particular ratio. So if there's too much carbon in your soil, like big chunks of wood chips, that carbon actually acts like a magnet and it pulls in all of the available nitrogen that's in your soil. And nitrogen is something that plants need. And when, when carbon in the form of wood chips grabs hold of that nitrogen, that nitrogen is no longer available to your plants. So um, that doesn't happen when you put the wood chips just on the top of your soil. And they can actually make a really nice slow, slow, um, slow breaking down mulch on your soil as long as you keep them right there on top. Um, leaves can make a really good mulch. Um, we, down here in the deep south, we don't tend to get that big seasonal supply of leaves like northern growers do when the leaves all fall. Um, our, our leaves tend to, tend to drop a little more sporadically. Um, and um, certain kinds of leaves down here um, are quite acidic. So if you know you already have acidic soil, you might want to avoid things like oak leaves. Um, another thing that can happen with leaves is that if you have too, too thick of a layer of leaves not broken up by anything else, um, they can actually become kind of compact and don't let a lot of oxygen through. So if you are using leaves to mulch, it's probably a good idea to mix it in with something else just so it doesn't become quite so, um, so compacted and anaerobic. Um, it changes, it'll change the composition of your soil microbes. Uh, grass is certainly something that you can use, um, but I would, I would generally recommend just let grass feed itself. Um, grass is also a plant. Um, it also does really well with some mulch and um, it, to self mulch is the best way uh, to keep your grass um, happy and healthy. And it's, it's definitely, if you know that your grass gets treated with herbicide, you definitely do not want to use that grass on your vegetable garden because um, it will impact any vegetable plants that you have in there. So in general, just, just leave the mulch option on your, um, on your lawnmower on and don't put those grass clippings on your garden bed um, unless you know that you have totally herbicide free and you're growing um, in a, on your garden bed, um, or excuse me, totally herbicide free lawn um, and um, you're growing some, some of your grass specifically to mulch your garden. So uh, straw and hay, these are two things that folks often kind of intermix. Um, they kind of use these two words um, to be one and the same, but they are actually two different things. Straw is what we typically would use for, um, for mulching a garden. Hay is animal feed. Um, so hay generally has a lot of um, seed heads from, from grasses and other weeds in it. Um, and that's really intentional um, because that's where a lot of the protein in the grass exists. Um, and so you don't wanna get hay because you'll be planting a lot of weed seeds along with it. So if you, if you do want to mulch with, um, with a grass product like straw, make sure you're getting mulch straw. Um, Another thing to just flag about straw, especially in the Deep South, is that in the Deep South, um, I'm going to give you a little backstory on why straw can be a little bit problematic um, in the Deep South. So in, um, in pastures and hay fields in the Deep South, there's many, many different varieties of weeds that are ac actually toxic or, or poisonous, some of which to the, to the point of death for livestock. So any farmer or rancher that's growing hay um, or, or straw for feed for animals um, is, is more likely in the deep south to use a persistent herbicide than, than farmers and ranchers um, growing in more northern climates where there's just very, very few uh, toxic and potentially deadly weeds growing in those fields. So persistent herbicide, um, it, I mean, it's certainly not on every bale of straw you'll get your hands on, um, but it, it can persist in soil for up to 10 years. 
um, and actually be pulled up into that straw. Um, and then if you put that straw that has herbicide residue in it on your garden, um, the, the life of that herbicide um, will continue its breakdown process in your garden bed. Um, and so that, that herbicide may actually impact your garden bed. So I use straw, um, huge amounts of mulch straw um, when I was a northern farmer. And, and now that I'm down in the, in the deep south, um, I tend to avoid it just for that reason, because you just never know um, if something has some herbicide that maybe someone doesn't even remember they sprayed, you know, eight or nine years prior. It could still impact your garden. So to sum it all up, um, those are some of, some of the best things to mulch with. You know, some of them have bigger drawbacks than others. Um, some of them are entirely free and probably growing in your own backyard. Um, but um, regardless of what, um, of what you use, um, mulch is an incredibly beneficial thing um, in raised beds, directly growing in the ground, even in pots. I, I, love, I love using um, things like Spanish moss in potted fruit trees and things like that. So that is what I have for you today on mulch. 